Hi, this is Harry Guinness for Tuts Plus. And in this tutorial, I'm going to wrap up my series on Hazel 3 and the Inbox folder. Over the past few tutorials, I've shown how to set up the Inbox and configure everything with Hazel 3 so your Mac is kept clean and tidy. However, there were a couple of rules that didn't fit into any of the previous tutorial. This one just wraps up any of those loose ends. I've mentioned before that I'm a photographer and I have to send pictures to models and editors and that sort of thing fairly often. I tend to do that through Dropbox because the files can be quite large. Rather than copy and paste things across to Dropbox, I use Hazel to sync the at images folder in my inbox to the inbox sync folder in Dropbox. So when I export an image like this one of Ali, so we'll call this Ali 3, and then hit export, it's going to get exported. It's going to go to the images folder in the inbox, and then it's going to get synced across to the images folder in the inbox sync folder any second now. As with everything with Hazel, there's always a little bit of a delay while it works through the operation. And there it is. Now if I want to share that and send it to someone, I can right click and click on share Dropbox link. Or because it's one of the most recent files added, click on the Dropbox icon and then click on share link. The best thing isn't that the files are copied to the inboxing folder, it's that they're removed when they're removed from the add images folder. If I click on Ali3 here and delete it, in the inbox sync folder, in the add images, once Hazel updates again, that file will be removed. This means I never have to deal with an overflowing Dropbox account. And there it goes. The rules to do this are really simple. If I jump into the Hazel preferences pane, you'll see there's this sync at images rule in the inbox folder. It actually has to be the first rule, otherwise things get a little bit messy. When I open it up, you can see that it's matching any file or folder that's name is at images. That's obviously going to be the at images folder. Then it syncs that folder into the inbox sync folder and runs rules on the folder contents. This just means that any of the images in the folder will be acted on as normal by all the rules that come later. It's the same as the dive into folders rule. Anytime you're doing things with a folder like this, where you want something to happen, as well as the dive in, you need to put it above the other rules. The other great thing is that Hazel can actually be used to source the clutter that's already on your Mac. With the inbox in Hazel 3, it's now very difficult to mess up your Mac again. However, all the previously messy files and folders are still as they are. I've set these rules up on the documents folder, but they'll work for any folder at all. Before you do it, you've got to make sure to pause the folder. So you right click and click on pause document rules or pause whatever the folder name is rules. It says resume now because it's already paused. Inside there are three rules, sort large, sort medium and sort small. Sort large matches any file that size is greater than 100 megabytes and the date created is not in the last hour. This is to stop Hazel from going all recursive on us and starting to sort the folders that it itself creates. It's going to set the color label to red and it's going to sort it into a subfolder with the date created and that's going to be the year and then the month just in numerals. Then click OK. Sort medium is very similar to sort large. Again, any file that is greater than 2 megabytes this time and the date created is not in the last hour. It gives it the orange color label and uses the same date matching pattern. Finally, sort small is a little bit different. It matches none of the following conditions and the size is greater than 2 megabytes and the date created is in the last hour. And then it gives it the color label yellow and the same date created. The slight inverse to the setup is required to get everything to play nice. Click OK and let's have a look at my documents folder. As you can see, it's sort of a, a mess of all sorts of different files and folders. Some of them are quite large, some of them are quite small. For example, we've got this 900 megabyte backup 
of my website. We've got a two megabyte PSD. We've got a 89 kilobyte dock. We have some PDFs. We have some other design documents. All sorts of very random and totally unsorted files. I could go through them one by one, but it's far easier if they're sorted out in a way that I can process them properly. To do that, I'm going to unpause the documents rules and click on resume documents rules. Right click again and click run rules now. And then we'll watch Hazel do its thing. Hazel's going to run through all those rules. It's going to tag them, sort them into these nice year and month folders. You can see that there's 2015 this month and then the different files. They're all small. That one's medium. It is 5.6 megabytes and then that backup is the 900 megabytes. You can see that if I know that's secure, I could delete that. Looking back, you can see we've got files from 2011, 2012, and this just means I can easily go through all the files I have here, see which ones are hugging the most space. You can see this Paul folder is quite large, and inside there's a load of videos. And then I can delete them and clear up the clutter on my Mac. What files I leave behind are all going to be sorted nicely by month and by date, which makes life really easy. The files inside the folders aren't tagged or sorted. If you want to do that, you could run the rules again just by changing the targeted folder or by using the dive into folders rule at the top. The problem with doing it that way is that all these files would be stripped out of the poll folder and into the general folder, which can create a mess if you've got a lot of files in a subfolder. So that's the end of this series on Hazel 3 and the inbox. If you're just joining now, check out the previous tutorials in the series and you'll get up to speed quite quickly. Once you've got everything set up, you won't know how you got by without it. If you have any questions, please post them underneath the tutorial below, which also contains a lot more information than this video. If you want to see me tackle other workflows in the future, Please add them to the comments with any suggestions, and if I can, I'll have a look at them and see if I can set them up with Hazel. Thank you. I'm Harry Guinness.